Congratulations, you're listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. You won. You're listening to Mind Pump. Now, today's episode, we answered four health and fitness questions, but the way we answered the episode, or excuse me, started the episode, was with an introductory portion. It's uh, 40 minutes long, so we talk about current events. We mention our sponsors. We have a lot of fun. After that 40-minute intro, we get into answering the fitness and health questions Here's what happened in today's podcast. We open up by talking about my COVID scare. Uh, Of all people, of course, it was me that thought that maybe he had COVID. Yeah. Uh, Then we talked about the science behind the COVID vaccine. Pretty fascinating stuff, uh, which led Justin to remember a study or a story he read about a man who injected himself with magic mushrooms. Yeah, not not a great idea. No. Then we talked about a bodybuilder of the 90s uh, who a lot of people believe to have the best genetics of all time, Victor Richards. I talked about a couple new fighters in MMA uh, one is a wrestler from Senegal. This guy is a monster. Uh, then we talked about Conor McGregor and his brand new watch, million dollar watch. Yeah. I hope it t- tells the future. It, it looks like it does. Then we mentioned one of our sponsors, Olipop. Uh, they're a great replacement for soda. So a can of Olipop is like 35 calories, no sugar. But here's the kicker. It has ingredients that are good for your gut. This is a gut healthy product pro gut and it tastes amazing um and this is probably why they had 900 percent growth last year Mm -hmm. um for for their company anyhow try them out go to drink olipop.com so that's the word drink olipop is o-l-i-p-o-p.com forward slash mind pump use the code mind pump get 15 percent off your first order root beer is the best then uh we give our predictions for the economy in the future because you know we're trainers we know that kind of stuff <laughs> we know all then we talked about barstool the barstool fund they're doing good things out there we talk about the simpsons and how they're able to predict everything strangely mm-hmm. uh we talk about how it's hard not to overtrain all working out together uh recently we've been working out together and it's uh ramping us all up adam gives a an update on his testosterone replacement therapy and then we talked about another company that we work with, Public Goods. You got to go check them out. You can get most of the stuff that you use every day. So kitchen stuff. Uh, there's uh, dog treats and dog food on there. There's uh, you know we could get shampoo and hairspray. Lots of and grocery items. Grocery items. Incredibly low prices. Ethically made. Uh, minimally packaged. Uh, no chemicals. Um, and a lot of the stuff you buy once, and then they send you. These biodegradable, reusable like containers. Anyway, it's really, really good stuff. Very inexpensive, and uh, you can use the Mind Pump code and get fifteen dollars off your first order. So, in other words, you can go on there, buy fifteen dollars worth of stuff, essentially get it for free. Go check them out. It's publicgoods.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use that code Mind Pump for that offer I just told you about, which was fifteen dollars off your first order. Then we got into answering the fitness and health questions. The first one. This person wanted to know our opinion on the German volume training methods. This is where you do 10 sets of 10 reps of a specific exercise in your workouts. The next question, this person wants to know what we think about this whole sweating for the wedding thing, you know, where you get in good shape for your wedding. Like, what are the good strategies or mindsets for people uh, in that phase? Sweating to the oldies. The next one, that's an old reference. Yeah. The next question, this person wants to know if it's normal to want to take a nap, a 30 to 60 minute nap after the workout. And then the final naps. question, this person wants to know if it's common for one leg to be a lot tighter than the other leg. Um, also, this month, we've put together a new uh, bundle of workout programs specifically for those of you who are just getting started with fitness or those of you who've already taken off a lot of time and want to get back into fitness. We call this the starter bundle. Um, so this includes some of our most popular programs. It includes MAPS Anabolic, a great foundational workout program for building strength, boosting the metabolism. So if you have a fast metabolism, it makes fat loss a lot easier. It's great for building muscle. Included in this bundle is also MAPS Prime. This is a great program to teach you how to correct muscle imbalances and get you to move better to prevent injury. Then there's also our intuitive nutrition guide. So this helps you with nutrition. And then we're throwing in MAPS Starter. This is the ideal program to get started with. If you've had like six months or more off, if you're a beginner, Start with MAP Starter, then move to MAPS Anabolic, and so on. So normally, if you got all these programs individually, it would cost you over $340, but this bundle right now is priced at $80. So 80 bucks gives you all what? those programs. Go check them out. By the way, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you could try them out for a full month. Return them if you're not satisfied. Go check it out. It's at mapsjanuary.com. That's M-A-P-S, january.com. 
And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, dog. You know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, yeah. Angry, yeah. We have three winners. Two for Apple Podcasts, one for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are Miss Hangers and WM. For Facebook, we have Scott W. Dalrymple. All three of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that T-shirt right out to you. The other day, uh, I don't remember what episode it was. We were talking about what were we talking about when I said that I would just go go tackle the animal or go just go. Oh, tackle. how how we would survive it? Like if <laughs> like <laughs> post apocalyptic, what skills would we have? Yeah, yeah, so you just go tackle. A you deer. just go just go tackle a deer. Yeah, yeah so like, we, it's not easy. A deer would kick your ass. Yeah, you oh, say easily. you say that right? So somebody sent a TikTok video to me uh, of a video of this this guy, these two guys driving on the road, and there was a like a, a, a deer on the side of the road, and dude jumps out and grabs it and brings it in his truck to go take it somewhere safe so it doesn't get hit on the freeway wow shows me a video of it he just picks up the deer and takes it yes that's a man right yeah. there that's a, that's a yeah. trusting deer yeah, yeah right like it probably yeah, no, was so confused oh yeah it's no it like, fought huh? it definitely fought going? a little bit i mean he had to he had to wrestle it in to hold it tight the deer, yeah the guy was all concerned about his truck the deer's parents i told you not to hide you. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly that guy's gonna eat you yeah i don't think that's we good. know where this goes i don't yeah. think it's good hunting strategy though. no no i don't think it's good hunting <laughs> strategy <laughs> yeah. deer, but it's possible well that's the point. you found the one example it's there possible. That's right. Yeah. Man, I had a little COVID scare, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course it was you, too. Of yeah. course. You know? It has to be me. Yeah, it, it definitely has to That's be. That's like you. God's way of being like, we're gonna, you're going to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah, so tell the audience. You wash your hands a lot. How Here this, you go. How this went down. Yeah, so uh, I went to a cousin's house. She cuts hair. She's obviously not working right now, but you know, she, she offered to cut my hair and Jessica's hair. So we went there, and we brought the baby. But she's like, you know, mask, everything's sanitized, you know, garage, everything's whatever. So we get there. She cuts Jessica's hair. She's then, you know, I'm, I'm holding the baby. Then we switch. And then she cut my hair. Her daughter comes in. Her daughter is uh, a huge fan of the show. She's a fitness. Uh, she's a trainer, actually a really good trainer. And so she shows up and she wants to say hi. So I'm talking to her and give her like a, a quick hug. That's it. But everybody's masked up and the whole deal, whatever. My cousin, you know, at one point says, Hey, can I hold the baby? Sure. Washes her hands, picks up the baby. Holds. Anyway, we, uh, that was like, uh, I don't know what day that was on a Saturday or whatever. Yeah. It was last weekend, right? Yeah. Monday, I get a call that her daughter, the one that was there, the personal test, trainer tested positive for COVID. Mm. And I'm just like, Oh, fuck. So, and this is right before we were going to go to visit uh, Jessica's family and go to Nevada. And Jessica's family still hasn't seen the baby. So I'm like, oh my God, dude, she, they held, she held the baby. I gave her a hug real quick. So now we're just like all freaking out. So like the whole week we're at home and we're just, just hold up, waiting to see what happens. Got the COVID test. Everything came back negative and everything. But that period of waiting, it's, you're, you're just, it's just a nightmare. Well, you go you go straight into chicken little mode too. Uh, well, I mean, you know what? It, the sky is falling. The sky yeah. is falling. You know what though? I tell you what. You say that you think that's funny. I'm going to tell you a story. My aunt, her daughter got it, and and they were super precautious. And luckily, only a couple people in the house got it, and the house is full of people. Nobody else got it because they took all those precautions. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you know, of course, what do I do when I get a, I get paranoid or afraid? I research like crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm looking up all, all the, the potential ways that yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really like bring my demise. How can no? no. How yeah. can I fight this? Not oh. my demise. <laughs> I'm not looking know. that up. Oh, okay, good. dude. Do you know you know that melatonin mm. uh, they're showing has a uh, like uh, some pretty um, pretty interesting effects against COVID. Oh, I haven't heard that yet. That's they know they gave that to Trump when he had uh, COVID. Melatonin. Gave, yes. Really. Yeah. And so here's the thing. My aunt's house got it. Right. There was a few people that got it. My grandfather lives with her. He's 89, mm -hmm. so he's high risk. And at one point he developed a cough, and everybody's like, "Oh shit!" And he just all he had was a cough, and nothing and nothing else happened. He takes 10 milligrams of melatonin every night, and has for years. Huh. I wonder if that's why. Yeah. Because, I mean, my grandfather's high risk. Yeah, so we got that. We got zinc. We got, like, vitamin D. Like, we got also baby aspirin. For like, the blood clotting. Yeah, I'm just- Fish I'm, oil. Yeah, I'm trying to hear all these, like, other, like, alternatives or ways to treat it when, when you do get it. Yeah, right? but melatonin was an interesting one. I found yeah, that, I heard so that I was, one yet. So I was doing the whole thing, dude. Doing was that part of Greenfield's uh, protocol? 
Um, I don't know if that was part of his. I just looked up studies. I was just trying to look up studies and see. And then I had people message because uh, in our forum I did a post, and then there were a couple people who work in medicine who were saying that that's part of the protocol that they're doing in some hospitals. Yeah, huh. where they're giving people. Well, you know, how's the uh, vaccine going? Because I know you've you've done a bit of research in terms of the actual technology behind it, and uh, it'd be cool to kind of for you to explain. Dude, that. so it's fascinating science. Uh, really, really fascinating. So here's how it works from my understanding, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get everything right, but so it's a, it's a different than other vaccines in that it uh, it is you are injecting yourself with RNA, which tells your cells to produce a spike protein, which is very similar to the protein that the COVID virus is it within. So your cells produce this spike protein. There's no mm. virus in it. It's just a spike protein. Uh -huh. Then your body mounts an immune response against this protein. So this is why people who get the vaccine, one of the more common side effects is like fever because that's your own immune system, you know, uh, building or whatever. Then, uh, and then you do it again, right? There's two shots. Then when, if you do get exposed to COVID, your body recognizes the protein that the COVID travels in and it prevents you from getting the severe I symptoms. See. So you get like, but it's it's so it's small amount, so it can recognize it. Then it'll uh, it, it, when you do get exposed to it, it'll recognize. It. Hopefully, is uh, sooner than not. Dude, the science is crazy though, because uh, based on the science, you technically could and get people's immune system to kill cancer, to treat like all kinds of stuff. Huh. So it's really fascinating stuff, but it does strong, cause an immune response. And uh, I know in Iceland, yeah. I think elderly people, some of them died because it was too oh, much. Oh, right. So it yeah. was just too aggressive of a response. Is that why they uh, they perished? I don't know. They just said that if you're really old and frail, you need to be careful, which kind of sucks because that's the piece. Of yeah, that's the that ones are. that we want to have it the yeah. most, right? But it's interesting. It's very fascinating science. Yeah. Could be a total breakthrough. So I don't know. Well, I told uh, the guys that, uh, but I didn't tell you, you ruined my night that night. So it was- uh, what? what? Yeah, it was, uh, well, I mean, it, two times in my, uh, in the <laughs> last, uh, two times in almost uh, a, yeah. two years now, I've had, you know, dad alone yeah. time, right? Yeah, I told he you was all by himself, dude. Yeah. Oh, like, no. Like he had like all the jurgens out, like everything. He was <laughs> ready to party. I get this, I get this, I got the, the house halls cl cleaned, I ate, I had my shower done, boys are walked, I just <laughs> put my feet up. I'm like, bro, I got exposed. Oh, and I'm getting, <laughs> and I'm, I, I, you know, I turn on the TV, I'm watching adult television and my phone is <laughs> going off like crazy and I'm like, no, work, no, work, no, and it's Sal, like back-to-back -back calls, and then I see a text pop up, and it says, like, call me immediately. And I'm just like, oh, my God, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Were you mid-stroke? Yeah, bro, I was <laughs> right in the middle of enjoying my night to myself. No wonder you were so and, calm on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> like, hello? So like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, oh, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're talking so cool. Candles were lit, everything, dude, and you just <laughs> And then, of course, after you do that, I, I go right you. into work mode. So I got I to gotta call Jerry, I call Katrina, I call Casey, and yeah. I'm just... Okay, what are we gonna do? Sal thinks he might have got COVID, and da 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 da, da and so just it just ruined my night. Oh dude. my yeah. bad! Yeah. I didn't I'm say sorry, nothing to you. Really I was telling go. the guys when I got on the plane, I was like, "Listen to what this motherfucker did to me the other night." I said, "This guy <laughs> blowing my phone up about possibly getting COVID." I'm just like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, bro. well, it's it's yeah. fuck. It sucks, man. Because you get in this crazy, this weird mental, you know, like worry. What it really what it is? It's not for me. I'm not worried about me. I'm not worried about Jessica. I'm more worried about my baby son because he's an infant. And there's little data on how it affects infants. We know kids get typically are, uh, you know, they don't get symptoms as bad as adults. Yeah. But there is very minimal data on infants below like six months or younger than six months. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, yeah. and I brought them. Wow. You know, so you just feel like a big jerk. Well, dude, like, so this is totally a different topic, but like, like speaking of crazy ways to treat yourself, uh, this guy, I guess they found this guy like, almost dead uh, with with psilocybin mushrooms growing inside his body. I read about this. Yeah. So basically he was what? trying to treat himself for getting off of like, uh, uh, you know, like opium, o opiates. Mm -hmm. And so he had read that like psilocybin was a, was a valid treatment. And so instead of just taking the mushrooms and like eating them, he actually boiled the mushrooms down and then intravenously injected them. Injected uh, what? Yeah, these mushrooms, and then so they started to grow like in his blood. I bet he got high as hell, though, huh? Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> like his organs were shutting down. Like they had to what? have aggressive like antibiotics to treat it. Like, but dude, who the hell comes up with that idea? Dude, you know what a stupid idea it is to inject a. You know, fungus grows everywhere, anywhere. Oh yeah, you inject that in yeah, yourself. Yeah, the little uh, the spores, like just in the air. Is he alive still? Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they were able to save them. Really? Yeah. Sure. And what do you do? You have to do like dialysis or something like that to like clean out. All, I mean, what happened? Oh, yeah, Probably yeah. intravenous antifungal yeah, medication. Antifungal, like antibiotics. super strong shit. Yeah, what? They'd have to, what an idiot. Yeah, but can you imagine having like mushrooms growing inside you? Like that's so weird. You, you, it's Crazy. Same reason why you wouldn't want to smoke them because you get into your lungs, right? Yeah, you get all that stuff. <laughs> Totally. If someone's going to message me, I smoke mushrooms. I smoke mushrooms all the time. Totally. That's totally fine. Weird strategy. Wow. I don't know, dude. I thought that was crazy. He's like, yeah, I like mushrooms, but you know what I hate about mushrooms? You got to wait like an hour. Yeah. You know? I just want to- Inject. I want to get high now. Yeah. So I'm just going to inject this right into my system. What is wrong with people? I don't know. It's just like- I don't know, man. There's so much misinformation. It seems like like more people are like taking it upon themselves to all of a sudden become a scientist and try out their own experiments. Hey, speaking of misinformation, I thought uh, I thought airlines were only supposed to be like a certain percentage capacity. No, that's uh, that ended in December. Oh, it did. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. they were doing like every other seat. Yeah, not anymore. So when I yeah when I flew back in, I want to say I don't remember when it was. When was it when I went to Idaho? Like March, April, May. That's when they were doing that. Yeah, it was all like the plane was just hardly anybody. No, now it's. It's like normal if it's yeah. if the, if it's full flight. Yeah. We when we flew back from Vegas, it was a completely full flight. I didn't think they were doing that. Yeah, no, they are. They stopped that back in December. Uh, of course, I did all my research right before we <laughs> were yeah. gonna go. Yeah, that stopped on December six. One thing you can do if you're really worried is you could go on a plane that lets you buy seats. And then buy the seats around buy a you. couple. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then you're. Jesus, <laughs> how expensive is that? I mean, I know, well, of course, you're you buying be, like four tickets. For, I was going to say, you almost, at that rate, then you may as well look into private, you yeah. know, flying private. Then. Yeah. That's isn't, that, isn't that a business now? Isn't that starting to grow where people uh, are, are almost like Uber, mm -hmm. where they, they pay? You buy a seat, but it's on a private jet. I would love to do that. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that would You got to do the Madden move where you just use the bus. <laughs> yeah, he you doesn't don't fuck fly around. You just, don't fly, you just bus. Why, wait, I don't know this. Madden. Yeah, he he was so afraid of flying. He he just would bust every single game. Yeah, his entire career. His he, entire career, He yeah. bust all over the country. No way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wouldn't fly. He was afraid of flying. You sure yeah. it wasn't because you're like an unhappy marriage? I don't know, honey. I got to drive to- <laughs> no, no, well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to be knows? gone for two weeks because you know, I got to take the bus. <laughs> no, right. I don't I'm think, really scared. I don't think that's the case. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they they changed that policy you know if you actually look into it the air on planes is incredibly you said that filtered and clean did they did they crank it up like did they do something yeah. more to they use insane filter like really already so why why did um like cruise ships why, why are they so bad it, it's contact it's just being around oh people. just all the yeah. yeah well it's very close quarters and, and but i just thought it was the air like it was terrible yeah and if that's true about airplanes why do i always feel like that's if i ever get sick that's normally when i get sick because you're also yeah. sitting next to people so they could filter all they want but if you're right next to someone, that air they're gonna spray you with their sneeze. Yeah, so it's really not that yeah. great. Don't Plus, they have I those like ionized filters now or whatever that really like like target like micro. I don't know. Yeah, I know it's HEPA filter and something else. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is part of travel. The reason why you get sick is you're you're probably tired, jet lagged, immune system is probably yeah. off. So I wouldn't, you know, I, I would say it's probably a big part of it. Yeah. But the the big risks are really the flights that are long. So when you when I did my from what I saw and read, it's the uh, five six hour or longer flights. Yeah. You know, an hour. Here's the deal. So of course, because I was exposed, I'm looking into all this stuff, and they're saying, you know, if you're if you're in a closed space with someone for hours and they also have symptoms, that's the highest risk. Mm -hmm. They don't have symptoms. You're around them for 10 minutes. They don't even consider that necessarily exposure or they do, but it's very minimal. So all those things are, you know, kind of a part of so it. So are you in the camp that we're eventually all going to get it or not? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. out, dude. It's, it's there. Very, yeah. It's a part of life. It's right. there. It's so a, if that's, if you're, if that's how you we feel, just all then, have to get through it. Then why then, you worry about it? Then I don't Because understand. I haven't, my son's an infant. So because of that, there's so little data on what it could possibly do to a you know a, a eight week old or ten week old baby. Yeah. But once he's a year, then I'm not going to be you know as, as as worried or as careful. Yeah. You know, it's like if you if you're you know if you're somebody with uh, lung disease or if you're right, really right. old, you know, you got to be careful. But it's there, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I I don't know. Anyway, it's good stuff. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Uh, I tagged you guys, or I sent it to you. That bodybuilder from the '90s, uh, best genetics. Uh, people think he has the best genetics of all time. Victor Richards. Have you guys seen this guy? I probably didn't even know. Yeah, maybe Doug. You yeah. can look up Victor Richards bodybuilder. Oh, I thought that was a flex uh, flex Wheeler video. No, I actually didn't even look at the name. Okay, so this dude, if you read about the guy, he was like five nine. And this is in the early to mid 90s. 
uh, would in the off season would easily get to three hundred pounds. Okay. Um, dwarfed the biggest bodybuilders of the time. Oh yeah, five nine. He must have looked huge. There's that first picture right there is him standing next to Dorian, uh, Doug, uh, Nigerian bodybuilder, and he. And okay, scroll down a little bit. That middle picture right there, sixteen years old. With that, with he's the, sixteen right there. It, with the beanie on. Oh yeah, no, but still look. Oh wow, what? that's like the that's most crazy. buffed. I I couldn't even get that jacked. He's sixteen no. right there. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And then he, he, you know, there people talk about his genetics because apparently the guy either didn't or barely used anabolic steroids, didn't do anything else. And the reason why he never really competed because he only he became a pro and then he stopped competing because he didn't want to do the drugs he said that were necessary to. Oh, interesting. So the way he looks right there. Oh, he'd be a fun person to talk to. Where's that's he, just where's, the natural. Where's he at today? Do you know? Off social media, off off all of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can't find him. But I was reading all about this guy and and he was like this, just this. It's crazy. He's a monster, dude. It's crazy how like the, the 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 varying degrees of genetics. Uh, that there are in the world. Yeah. You know, you see a picture of some at 16. Yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy. I mean, you can't. That's insane. That's yeah. totally crazy. Yeah, I don't know why we never... I mean, he what, he competed one time as a pro, then he was out or what? That's it. One time, and then you didn't want to compete anymore. And Where did you find this? What were you... I, mean, I remember I used to read about this guy back in the day, and then there was a post. Uh, I follow a couple like bodybuilding historian uh, uh, you know, pages on Instagram or whatever. <clears throat> And then they brought him up, and I started, you know, reading more about the guy. And I was like, oh, "What'd you think of uh, Rami winning?" I, oh, the Olympia. Yeah, I mean, psh, he was the best guy for sure. Yeah, no, I thought he looked good. Yeah, they don't look that sharp anymore, though, huh? Uh, I, you know, though, I thought that he did. I thought he came. I think he came. Like his waist looks way. He looked way better than everybody else, mm. especially for his size. I thought he looked really good. Well, speaking of genetics, Doug, I'm going to send you a cli uh, um, this link here because I want you to pull this up so the guys can see it. There's this. Uh, there's an MMA fight that's scheduled with a couple new MMA fighters. One guy is a world champion uh, jujitsu fighter who I'm familiar with. Um, his name is uh, I think Buchecha is his last name, or no, that's his nickname, Buchecha. And this guy's like a badass in jujitsu, just crushes people. Big strong dude. And then he's gonna fight a Senegalese wrestler. So this is a champion wrestler from uh, Senegal. Senegalese, excuse me, Senegalese wrestling. Do you guys know? Have you guys ever seen Senegalese wrestling? No, no. What, what's, what are the rules? What's <laughs> so different? these guys, okay, the guy on the That's right, super niche. Look at that guy right there. So, uh, oh, we've what, you've showed us clips. Have of I this showed you? This guy? Yeah, you've showed us clips of this. Look, <laughs> look at the size of that guy, bro. Oh uh, yeah. And he's like living. He's like his you know, chest is humongous. Yeah. So they oil themselves up and they wrestle. So those two guys are gonna fight. I can't wait to watch that. Yeah. It just. But speaking of genetics, look at that dude. He's yeah. just a. Is that going to be? Well, I saw that clip, and he was just kept picking them up and slamming them like he was a little baby, like he didn't weigh anything. Yeah. Oh, is crazy. that going to be in UFC or a, a no, different? No, no. I don't think either one of them are good enough to fight in the in the UFC. So, what are the alternatives? Is it still Pride and then um, Bellator? Bellator, of course, but uh, you know, there's like one FC or whatever. Uh, I think you're. That, yeah, I that's think for kickboxing. Though, I think right? no, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's uh, Aries FC. Or something like that, and then there's um, what's the other one that you said? Are, are any well, I liked Pride. That was no Pride. Favorite, I think was bought by UFC. Yeah. Are oh, any really? are any of you guys following to see if like how it's doing business wise right now? How UFC is doing? Is it getting is it getting crushed? I don't know. Do you yeah. know? That's a good question. Isn't Conor McGregor supposed to fight? Soon? Yeah. Did uh -huh. you see he was on our buddy's uh, podcast? Did you see that? Yeah. No. Josh Thompson. Yeah. Josh yeah. Thompson got him on the podcast. Did you see the million dollar watch that uh, McGregor bought? I heard. Did you see it? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. It's you haven't seen it. No, I haven't. Seen Doug, it. can you look up uh, Conor McGregor's million dollar watch? Mm. It's like it's like a, a fantasy land inside of a watch. What is the best way to explain it? It's like it's something Adam would wear. <laughs> no, so, I would not. Yes, yes you. <laughs> no, would. I would not. All right. No, All right. I wouldn't. Pull it up and it's then like my watches are my watches inside. are very clean and classy, dude. They so, are not over the face. You wouldn't buy that right there. Where? Which one? Oh, the one of the the, the no, one of the very. That looks oh, stupid, what? dude. <laughs> No, man. That's his million dollars. Who makes it? Who's the maker? I have no idea. Yeah, just stupid. Look what at is... that. Why would you buy that? It's what? insane to me. It's a watch. Well, I mean, I, I, it's does all- it tell the future? That it's does... all It's all relative, right? I guess when you're- How, how much is- What's his that net- That does look like, like future land pl layout at uh, Disneyland or something. Like, yeah, if, like, if you look close enough, yeah. there's like people living in there. The world's fair. It's in my watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? what's, what, what is his net worth at right now? Do you know where he's at? Because a $1 million watch, if, if you're worth, you know- Five hundred million dollars. It's probably not that big of a deal, right? Mm, I, I mean, I guess. I guess you're right, right? If you yeah. have five hundred thousand dollars and you bought a thousand dollar watch, 
it would be the same. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's it's all relative. So I, it's, I guess. it sounds ridiculous to us because a million dollars on a watch is insane. But it's only insane if you know. You, you know, but, there's a net worth right there. Hundred. Uh, he's only he's only 120 million. How's that possible? Did he get I mean, paid like 100 a million in one fight? Uh, one fight. It was probably like 50. Right? Is that right, Doug? Probably taxes. Taxes. Took away a bunch of it. Taxes are a motherfucker. I don't know, though, if I he trust made... that website. That's the one that said Adam was worth like $15 million. Uh, is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> the same one? Yeah. Where am I at now? Am I going up or down? Let's look at Adam's yeah, net worth. Look at Adam Schaefer net worth. Yeah, yeah, see if yeah. I'm getting richer. Or Did it say, didn't it say you were worth? I don't remember what it said. It, yeah, it was at least like $10 million. I want to know how they come wow, up with Wow, look, that. and even Google even has Mind Pump in there. Let's see here. No, that's LinkedIn. That's LinkedIn. I don't know if it's going to be there anymore. No, I'm, so I'm broke. <laughs> Set it up. What does that say? Took it off. Am I going four million. Up? Oh, okay. Oh, well, you million. lost money, huh? Yeah, did I? Yeah, I must. Have you lose some money, man. <laughs> <It's little laughs> making bet. some aggressive moves. I guess. You're 36 years old. Maybe. Too. Oh, am I? Okay, I like this, is a this great one. Site. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> did you make this site? <laughs> I know, yeah, right. He's got his handsome. And you're born in hair in May. Why does it say penis size on it? You did make this. Oh, get out of here! It says I'm born in May. Also. That's hilarious. That's totally wrong. Like, who makes that? Ah, uh, see, yeah. see, oh, when, well, people get bored. When yeah. I see, when I look at something like a million dollar watch, regardless of how much money I would have, I always do this in my head: like, what else could I do with a million dollars? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know enough about that watch, but Doug and I maybe were it's an investment, right? Doug, yeah. yeah, Doug and I were talking about watches on the on the flight over, and uh, you know, the the cool thing about like certain watches, I don't know about what he's wearing. Uh, I would imagine it is. Is there, you know, they only make, like, if you get, like, a Rolex, a Panerai, a, a Breitling, there's only so many they make of that watch. Mm -hmm. And so, as time goes on, the value goes up. Every watch that I own, I could sell it after I've worn it for more than what I bought it for. Mm. Yeah. So, you look at it like- it, Yeah, like, but I would still look at it like, okay, what other investments are better? Well, well that's mean, the thing. I mean, not, at that it, level, it's like, it's either that, or it's like paintings, you know, like really exclusive, like like expensive well, items and, that you can resell. Well, and, and then also too, I mean, if you're invested in stock and in real estate and other places, then yeah, I mean, I'm not why not? I'm not going to judge. I'm saying for me- Because you know what you can't do? You sure as shit can't wear your stock investment. Yeah. You sure as shit yeah. can't, it doesn't go with your suit. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, there's certain things. That I mean, that's great. I have a printout of your, <laughs> yeah, your portfolio yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on your wrist. I got it all on my place. grill right here. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't, you know, I don't know things like that that I think that hold their value or increase in value over time. Speaking of money, you know what I watched that I I, I totally forgot, and but uh, Cobra Kai got me thinking about uh, uh, this again. Have you? When's the last time you guys watched Karate Kid Three? Oh yeah, it's been a while, dude. So I watched it once way back in the day, yeah. and then I was like, whatever. And so I forgot all about it, and I watched it again, uh -huh. and I re I remember why I didn't watch it again. It wasn't. It good. wasn't good. Yeah, no. like the the guy came back with the ponytail, trained him. Is to too good. Be because I I watched two's decent. Two's I okay. Watch, I watched one like a hundred times. One is the best. And then I think I've seen Second two, is two, two, maybe a couple two's times. Two's good. Yeah, three was kind of garbage. Yeah, yeah. It, but I mean, it was it was whatever. I got you know I got to, so now I think I know what they're gonna do for the next Cobra Kai. Of course, don't that, hey, that hey, ponytail easy, guy Don't ruin back. it. I'm not finished yet. You have it? What? No, no. I still got a couple episodes left. I haven't had a chance to, uh, to finish. I, I ran through those quick. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know how they're going to bring him back after he died. Stupid. Get out of here. Don't ruin it. Ruin the <laughs> show. The kids, don't ruin yeah. the show. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> hey, speaking of success, I read an article about Olipop's, uh, uh, their, their, their performance in 2020. 900% growth. Yeah. What? what? Yeah. And, and the, wow. the, the CEO said that their repurchase rate is astronomical. So oh. people buy it. Oh, that's not awesome. And then go back and just buy way more. Well, because it tastes awesome. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's. What an alternative to soda. I have never... Uh, well, that's you, it, yeah. Like, if you like things that taste good, I can't think of a better alternative to yeah. soda because it's... That's better on my stomach and everything else. It's, it's, well, it's, it's actually game good, It's actually pro-gut health. Right. The stuff they put in there is for your gut, and then there's no sugar and the calories... I know. Right. I always feel good after... What are the... Uh, like 35 calories, I think. Is that the whole can? Uh, yeah, yeah. 35 calories in the whole can. Yeah, so... Yeah. Th can you think of a better alternative three to grams soda? Of, three grams of sugar. That's I, enough, no. yeah. Nine hundred percent water, but yeah. yeah, that's insane. That's a company. That's, sexy. That's, I think that's a company that's going to go gangbusters. Well, they're all over the now. I mean, when you guys see them on when we get tagged on Instagram, it's actually rare that anyone buys it directly through them. So they they have they're in all kinds of stores now. Yeah. 
So a lot of times people just find them. They hear it on the show, and then they see them on, like in a grocery store, and then they they pick them yeah, up. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it in Whole Foods. I don't know if that's in all of them, but I've definitely seen it I don't, before. I don't, I don't think I've seen them in yeah. Whole Foods. Yeah, they're no, they're popping up all over the place. Yeah, they're crushing. I mean, 900% growth is insane. And when people are coming back to buy more, it tells you a lot of good stuff. It's great, it's great meeting these companies uh, in those early stages and being able to be a part of uh, their growth. It's a yeah. little frustrating to not own part of the company when i see that happen yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah. speaking of growth and money and all that stuff like that i actually wanted it's uh, i wanted to talk with you guys because this last week a lot's happened um and without getting political right about it uh, i'm i'm interested in in uh what you think is going to happen to the economy in the next year hmm. what's your theory with because they just they announced just recently um that bernie sanders is running the budget right so isn't, mm. that, isn't that what i heard mm. is that correct <laughs> yeah he's i forgot what his position is right yeah but he's yeah. he's playing a role and then i also know that biden has already got 1.9 trillion that he's trying to get uh-huh. is that correct uh-huh. and then we already had the 900 billion right before that so we've had the 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 two trillion, the so nine hundred. We're gonna print a lot more money. So then, the the prediction that the economist that I talked about almost four or five months ago is right on pace, yeah, right? I told you keep doing that. Yeah, they, the 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 prediction was we would see at least three to four two trillion dollar stimulus packages get passed through, especially if we if we if Biden got office. So what's your theory? What are you guys all doing personally, and what are your thoughts of of what's going to happen in the next uh, one to four years? Oh man, mm. I'm just just buying guns, Shuff- no, I'm shuffling. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm doing the shuffle. No, I think um, you know classical. If you were to look at it like from an investor uh, investor standpoint, you're probably expecting some level of asset inflation. Um, so yeah. buying assets might be a good way to hedge against that. So like property. Stock market's probably going to continue to blow up until it whatever pops. Um, Bernie Sanders, I mean, there is not, there isn't a spending bill the guy doesn't love. So I can only imagine yeah. how much more they're going to want to spend. Uh, the one thing that really annoys me, um, and I don't care what your I, what your beliefs are on minimum wage, but as part of this this bill, Biden is trying to increase the min, the federal minimum wage. From I think it's eight, f- it's eight something to up to fifteen. Fifteen dollars, yeah, yeah, almost double. I can't think of a worse time to do that. Hmm. You just small businesses just got crushed with yeah. lockdowns, and then when they reopen, now you got to pay your employees fifteen bucks yeah. Yeah. an hour. Isn't that going to the crush best them? thing I've seen to take us out of this quagmire? Is uh, you know from Barstool Sports, like what they've been doing for oh, small businesses. I wanted, I'm so glad you brought that up. What a great guy that dude. Guy is. Like, Where are they at right now? Can the government just please take notes? Mm-hmm. You know, from these businesses that are really putting it out there, like one to one, and helping uh, these individual businesses, it's mm-hmm. amazing. They, they had doing. they had Aaron Rodgers on the other day. They got Elon Musk the other day. Who, where are they at? Do you know where they're at? They're, mm-hmm. The last I had heard, it was like at twenty. It was like million. twenty million. The last time I checked, that so was explain like, exactly what they're doing. So yeah. all they're doing is they're getting all these rich, famous people to donate money, and then yeah. they're going and then they're giving it to small businesses. Yeah, mm. literally like calling them up and Zoom and they like announcing that they've those are gonna know, be so qualified. Do you guys get emotional watching those? Yeah, like, I watched a couple on. Like, yeah, oh. well, it gives you hope again with humanity, right? All this other stuff that we've seen with all the riots on both sides and yeah. all the bullshit and the division that you see, it's really cool to see a company like Barstool Sports come out do something like that, yeah. and then to see other people get behind it and support support it and it's just and there's nothing there's no legislation behind it no one's being forced to do any of this this is just good people coming together to help other good people mm-hmm. i just right. i like it what, what do they call it, it the bar it's just giving fund. them a chance to keep their businesses going and, and provide for their families it's, well it's like a basic you know american idea yeah. where's it where's it at doug does it say oh yeah 27 million Wow. wow. That's, that's so great. Cool. That's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah I, well, I love it, there might be a little light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it, with a remarkable turn of events, I know that the, the, the mayor of Chicago is said that it's time to end the lockdowns. Same thing with the mayor of New York. Well, Same yeah, there's no more elections, so yeah. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> get back to business, right, Stop, guys? Justin. Yeah. <laughs> there was a stu- rally. Did you guys see the study that came out that said that there were not really any benefits from lockdowns? It was on. It was in Newsweek and actually multiple news organizations. Yeah, we can see it, dude. It all spread anyway. And they were saying that the lockdowns were not uh, super 
effective or actually counterproductive and yeah. that we should probably end them all, which is I'm glad that, that that study came out. So now we have some evidence. I don't know if Doug, maybe you can bring it up, mm-hmm. um, but I'm glad something like that, you know. That's convenient. Came out. <laughs> <Stop>. Yeah, it <laughs> comes out later. You guys, <laughs> you know, that's cool. Stop with the conspiracy. It's interesting. Uh, did, you, did you, speaking of conspiracy what do you mean stuff. conspiracy theory? It's not, Come on, just, guy. You know, what's the conspiracy about it? I mean, uh, no, a lot of people were calling like, that since day one, dude. Yeah, come on. Come on. Get did out you, of here. Did you guys, did you guys see that they declassified? A little bit of planning there. Did you just, Justin might have seen this. Did what? you see that they declassified all stuff yes. on UFOs? Yes, I know. And okay, so that's all out, right? Have you gone through and tried to like read some of these documents? And, oh my like God, a, I keep waiting for like all the nerds to get a hold of it and like you know dissect un- it, uncode all for it for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please. Like I, I don't know what's in there because I started to kind of read it and I'm like, oh my God, I don't have time for this. You know what though? Okay, here's the deal, dude. It's like I'm interested though. Yeah, but okay, hold on a second. This is how much I believe that shit though. This is <laughs> this is yeah, it's all misinformation, just like from before. You know, like it's dude, it's dude, just, it's as trustworthy as those ads that tell you that there's hot moms in your area that want to have you know <laughs> it's like you know the cia themselves hey guys yeah. we'll let you see everything don't you trust yeah. us this Here. is everything that yeah. we have here's to. what we disclosed <laughs> shut up bro. Uh, okay yeah you know what i'm saying no, no. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. nothing there's probably nothing about aliens it's probably just like you know like different like uh, projects that they did before that that looked like yeah. alien spacecraft it's, it's probably just like uh, yeah, oh someone saw something and then we made sure to write it down yeah you know yeah. yeah. Well, talk about you know conspiracy theories. Since you guys are going down the rabbit hole, I thought the video that was that's going viral right now, which is the you know the weird fucking bull, the guy with the bull horns on his head, yeah, walking in like they're getting a tour. Uh, I know. Yeah. Did I'll, he? So did he watch the Simpsons episode and then put that outfit on, or did the Simpsons really call that? <laughs> Because that's just they've, too weird. They've predicted everything. You know, they, just too weird. They predicted Trump winning the yeah. election. They predict. I mean, so many things. You know what I think? Okay, they just did everything. Like the Simpsons, like wrote every scenario. I don't. I don't know. But and so then many it just times. like uh, you know, it's just like Nostradamus. He just said everything, and then sometimes he gets it right, bro. But Nostradamus's stuff is like hundreds or thousands of years it took to happen. You True. know what? I here's okay. Here's my okay. theory. I if, if we're living in a simulation, it's a big computer game right now, okay. yeah. and that's the way that the designers fuck with us. Is they're like, uh, let's put in an Easter egg. Yeah. If people want to know this shit's going <laughs> to happen. The, through the Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it the most popular. Simpsons and South Park are like where you can find the all most this. popular show in of plain all time. sight, you yeah. know, the whole time. Yeah. And we just, yeah. Oh. Yeah. They'll, never, they'll never catch on that, you know, we're telling them all the secrets of what's going to happen. <laughs> 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 Should have paid more attention to the Simpsons. Oh, <laughs> man. Anyway, dude, I got to tell you guys, there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a con, not a pro, but a con from working out with you guys uh, here at the studio. <laughs> the co- a con? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to overtrain. Yeah, yeah. It's mentally, I get caught up in the energy, and I end up going beyond what I probably should. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of momentum there. It, it is like it's nice because it's like you're like, yeah, I'm like, I get up and I'm motivated to start moving weights and all that. But yeah, being around you guys, it does kind of like <laughs> you you got to check yourself because I'll just like keep going. Oh, well, while. I know that I was that because we just we just went to Vegas and I took four days off in a row. So we I've been. Uh, now on a solid four or five weeks without like missing, I think a day is the most I've taken off in a week. And, and then I took four days off in Vegas and we lifted today together and I felt amazing today. That's, that's, that's that's always, right. Mm -hmm. That's always the sign is when I know that I'm, I'm pushing my body too much and I'm overreaching too much or, or scaling the volume uh, too quickly. Uh, is when I take off, you know, three, four days in a row like that, and then when I go back in the gym, I actually feel stronger and better. Like, yeah, to I me, mean, that's always a sign that I need to back off. I, so right. I took off. Uh, I took three days off because that's when I was waiting for my, you know, the COVID test and everything. I don't want to like, you know, hammer my immune system with workouts. Um, so I just didn't work out. Um, but uh, I reevaluated. Same thing, Adam. I, w- I worked out. I got a great pump. I felt stronger. I'm like, okay, I was definitely overtraining. So I'm just cutting down on the volume too. My volume, I was at, I was probably close to 18 to 20 sets per body part per for the week, yeah. which is a lot of volume uh, yeah. for me. Yeah. So I'm cutting it down to about 12, 10 to 12. So almost half. And I'm going to see what's you know, what happens. And it's funny. I, this is something that I run into every once in a while, but it's way harder working out with you guys. Way harder because yeah. it's exciting. We got the music. We're pumped. Everybody's having a good time. I can go in here thinking to myself. I'm going to go easier, but then I get caught up in the energy yeah. and in the pre-workout and then that's it. I end up pushing oh, yeah. it. Well, you changed your split up. I think I'm going to still stay with the same split, only I'm just going to add in a, a rest day after each round. 
So before so what are you doing? You're gonna push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest. Yes. Where before I was I was going push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest, mm. push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest. Yeah, yeah. So I was only resting one day of the week. I think what I'm gonna do now is 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 split it up. Oh, you mean before you were going oh I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I was running sense. I was running six days of training one day in a row, off. one day off, six days in a row. So training. that means every week uh I'll workout's gonna fall on a different day type of deal. Probably. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean we're not like really lifting with each other right now. I mean we're training at the same time, but it's yeah. all, we've been off. Like, I mean, today it all aligned. We actually were all doing chest stuff. Are you doing upper body? No, I'm, so I switched mine now. Now I'm going upper, lower, rest, upper, lower, and then two days rest. So I'm only going to work out uh, four days a week hmm. instead of the six. I'm cutting it down to four, cutting my sets down. And then what I'm going to do on the days in between is if I feel like I need extra core work or mobility work, then that's what I'm going to do. And I, I actually want to uh, have you, Justin, work with me on things like the clubs mm -hmm. and on the mace mm -hmm. uh, because- oh, uh, That's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I can't Just, wait. You guys have to leave the room. Yeah. Stand way over there. <laughs> I'm going to be swinging this big You're going to have to start with like a PVC pipe, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be Honestly fun, dude. Say, I'm strong enough. <laughs> dude, yeah. I just might hit everything around me. <laughs> oh, with that. God. I'll get you to throw a baseball, dude, by the time we're done. I don't care. What? I don't care. I don't care. I don't no, care. Yeah, I'd love to help you with that. I got a ton of DMs about the conversation that we had about the testosterone and my hormone therapy. So that I thought that's, I got to remember to kind of keep everybody at that. I just did my blood work. So uh, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna be as as transparent with the audience as possible, so they can know what what, what I'm going into. And so right now, uh, my my kidneys I forget what it's uh, what the actual um, on my on my blood work what she said, but I know that that was the concern on the first one, and it's, it's from the crabs probably. Uh, you think that's what it is? Yeah, the STDs are doing it. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, everybody gets them. So it's not it's not it's not like uh, scary high, but it was high like she thought I worked out high. in the morning and I didn't work out in the morning. So it must be your CK levels. That I are, think that's what it. I think that's what it is, which is like creatine, creatine levels, yeah. right? Yeah, a lot of muscle mass, muscle damage uh, can cause high protein sometimes can cause it, but it's supposed to be elevated. But yours must have been higher than what they would anticipate. Now, now if I was overtraining like I think I was- it will, you, It'll raise it. Oh, it will? Yeah. Oh, okay, so maybe that's what it is, yeah. is that I, maybe a combination of maybe the- Because I know uh, the the first common offenders that we, we look at is like uh, caffeine, creatine, and then mm -hmm. overtraining. It depends on the number, though. So you didn't you don't know what it is that they were- I'll bring it- So I'll, I'll, again, I-, I, I I got it over the phone, right? So I took the mm -hmm. test before I flew out to Vegas. She called me while I was in Vegas, and then we review uh, all the numbers. We're actually they're actually going to bump my testosterone a little bit because my my hormones came back. So the way it works is you I have they give me a shot every week, and then they retest after four weeks to see when I on day seven mm -hmm. where is my my levels at, and my levels were actually a little bit lower than what they were when I even started. So they wanted they wanted to boost me up a tiny bit because they're trying. I think they're trying to keep it to where on the last day. So on day seven, I come back down to the kind of like four fifty to six hundred range is where I think where they're trying. Yeah, because they they know it peaks. I know. So after you do something like that, it goes up like up to four hundred percent the day after, but then it mm. slowly comes down. Throughout the week, yeah, and uh, and I think they're measuring you at the end, right? So they want you to not to go below. Yeah, they don't want to see me. I think they want to see me kind of hover at least to where I was at or above, and so I was a little bit lower. So they they're ten milligrams more, so like hardly any more. So well, yeah, this is prescription. Yeah, not so black market. <laughs> yeah, if it was your if it was your steroid dealer, oh, triple that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sprinkle some deep ball on. Add some sesame onto that. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, totally, totally. You know yeah, oh, but man. it's. Uh, I mean, I was telling them. I said, I said, I feel really, really good. So as far as like my energy levels and strength and recovery and libido, like all that stuff has felt mm. amazing. Right Adam, now. I wanted to ask you, cause I know you, you manage the sponsors, uh, you know, pretty much the most, uh, out of it or, or all of it. Um, how is it work with, um, uh, with public goods? Because the, the more I dig into their company, the more I'm like, it's pretty remarkable. If you go on their on their site, and I know you guys do shopping there, the prices are so low. Yeah, it's kind of it's like, how do it, they do this? I know it's like a no brand. I just don't know if enough people know, you know, how like much they would save uh, just going and using. Those they products. have, you know, what it is. They have no di no distributors and no retailers at all. Yeah, it's pure direct uh, to you. And then when it comes to like houseware stuff, there's one thing. There's one. 
hand soap. There's one, yeah. you know, cleaner, whatever. And then all of them, you know, of course, it's they're very simple and straightforward. And, it, and then they send you the, it's re, and it's, uh, you know, reusable containers and all that stuff. Well, and I'm so not the sure. Prices are insanely I, I, I'm not sure they like being compared to this, but to me, they it, it feels like a direct to consumer Costco type of brand, mm. right? And you know how Costco has their own brand of Kirkland. Instead, they, they don't brand at all. Everything's like, like has that very clean black and white label. And there's not a lot of money and stuff put into that. All the money is put into saving you at wholesale type prices. So yeah, you get your bathroom stuff for ridiculously cheap. The mm. raise, I know Doug uses the razors already after he he got on that. I'm getting on that bandwagon. And oh yeah. I yeah. know the soap and the shampoo, you and the dollar you get like four razors or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it is. It's it's really really cheap when you look at it. So it's and it's great product. And like you said, they they do everything like uh, re- reusable, so Well, so here's the thing when you get your order from them. So I don't know about you guys. So Jessica is very um uh, what's the what's the environmentally conscious? Mm. Very like mm-hmm. if I'm washing dishes, if I leave the water on too long, she'll you know turn it off. She's always like looking at containers. She gets really upset when we get things from Amazon because you know you get something from Amazon that's the size of like my phone. It comes oh, in like no. there's so much boxing and so shit. much over yeah like packaging involved. Yeah, and so when you get something from Public Goods, they don't do that. It's very very minimal and you can see that. And then the the containers that their product come in are sugar cane, like sugar cane bottles and stuff. Oh no way. So, so they're biodegradable yes, or whatever. Yeah, so it's I think this is the future. I really do. I think consumers are more privy to it and then they've 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 hit the magic spot which is yeah. Can we make things more like you know? Can we do the non toxic chemicals? Can we do things that are more environmentally friendly, but also make it so that it's cost effective and right. less expensive? Yeah. Which in the past was impossible. It's like, well, you, you pay yeah, for that. You had stuff. to pay a lot extra just to go out of your way to be concerned about those mm-hmm. things. Well, I'm assuming that it's been going well and been going well for our audience because I mean we're renewed for the entire year with them. So I mean they wouldn't have done that if our audience wasn't receiving it well and wasn't enjoying the product. So, well, good, good. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes it's hard to talk about something like that because they offer so much. I know there's so many new things in the grocery list. I like looked at all these like items that I didn't even like see before. Like you just go in there. <laughs> you get lost well even myself i'm still guilty of this because we've been trained to kind of like our our grocery list that we have delivered to the instacart to the house every day or on a regular not every day but on the regular do you guys do most of your grocery shopping like that yeah most of it really yeah most of it so could tr- we try and like i don't know maybe now we're down to once or twice a month of like going into the grocery store and trying to buy like bulk then and then we use instacart to kind of supplement all the kind of day-to-day like stuff. the fresh stuff that goes back yeah so that's kind of that's the hard the hardest part i think with like instacart is doing the the vegetables and fruit and stuff like that because you, you tend to like to pick that out so katrina does like to go to the store for those things but a lot of the other stuff we can just order from there. But again, I, like I said, I, I'm still getting better about like every time something comes in that we order, I'm like, oh, you, public good sells this, and they sell it for cheaper and better. Like, I've got to I've got to shift to where I'm like using all of all of their products, so I'd save money. That Especially way. if you have reusables, you do the prescription. I'm sorry, not the prescription. Excuse yeah. me. The uh, what's it called? Uh, subscription. Yeah, subscription. No, prescription. <laughs> 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 My, I get prescription hand soap. Yeah, it's so damn strong. But yeah. anyway. First question is from Fit Vic. Thoughts on German volume training methods. Love it. 10 by 10. Yeah, this is so, um, that's the name that they've given it, but this is how uh, lifters used to lift back in the day. Um, Mm -hmm. They didn't do lots of exercises. If they increased the volume, they would do more sets Mm -hmm. of a specific exercise. So just a quick rundown, uh, German volume training refers to exactly that. So rather than doing three exercises or four exercises for my chest and doing three sets each, uh, do one exercise and doing 10 sets yeah. of that single it exercise. It allows you to get really good at that exercise. Oh, the, the skill that you develop from it and the strength that you'll you'll develop from it through the roof because a lot of people don't realize this, but um, you know, obviously muscles move the weight, they contract, so they definitely are a part of the strength formula. But technique and skill is a big part of that. And so a lot of getting a better bench press is getting bigger muscles, but it's Mm -hmm. also getting better at bench press. Um, And then also strength gains can be pretty specific. Um, There's a transfer, but they can Mm -hmm. be pretty specific to what you train. So this, I love this method, especially if you want to get really good at certain exercises. Like if you want to get really good at an overhead press, instead of doing, you know, three different shoulder exercises, just do a lot of sets 
of shoulder press. Yeah, I love it. I love the simplicity of it. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, I know for your average person who doesn't really have like a trainer brain when they go into the gym, it's just like, what do I do? You just look at all these like machines, you look at all the dumbbells, like where do I start? Whatever. Like something like this is like so painfully like it's, you're going to do this today. This, this like two to three to, you know, five exercises, whatever, but like very, very straightforward. And I'm just going to kind of hone in on this as a particular skill and just practice it until I get really strong. Mm. I don't think I've ever followed a, a complete uh, GVT like protocol though, where I went through like a whole program that way. Mm -hmm. I like to intermittently kind Same. of do this, you yeah, know, or, oh, you know what? I haven't done this in a long time today. I'm going to do 10 sets of bench and then I would just do that. Yeah. I would say our maps power lift program is probably the closest, probably closest thing that reflects this. I mean, there's a lot of eight set extra. There's mm -hmm. a lot of eight set exercises in there. You're only doing the major lifts and, and a lot of volume in it so and a lot of it's around practicing and getting good at it so i'd say that's probably the program we have that's closest to that but we get asked this a lot and i think it's a i think it's a great tool the funny part is i i think it's not as popular because people like all this different shit yep. you yeah. know they all want they want novelty to have, yeah they want to have you know 10 different exercises or be taught something new when the truth is if you train this way you picked five to seven of the best exercises and you always came in the gym and you did 10 sets of them, you get really good at them and you get really strong and yeah. build a lot of muscle. It used to always uh, kind of annoy me when I would hear clients say something like, oh, what's next? That this is, uh, you know, I've, I've done this. I'm bored now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is this you know, all I'm doing today? Yeah. Like, like yeah. it's supposed to be entertainment, but I get it. That's a factor. Right. Yeah. So I do get that. I look, I tell you, uh, for me personally, this is one of the fastest way for me now, I don't do this all the time, but if I want to get really strong at something and really reap the benefit, this is the fastest way. Like, mm -hmm. if I do 10 sets of 10 reps for squats, I'm going to get really good at squats in a short period of time. Now, here's some some things, some pointers to, to keep in mind. If you're doing 10 sets of 10 reps, <laughs> start with the weight that yeah. is lighter than you think, okay? Because, That's a massive factor. Yeah, because you do 10 of 10, uh, you think, oh, this is easy with your first set. Eh, you just wait till you get to set number eight or nine. Yeah. I did this with squats. I did it with 225, which 10 reps is relatively easy for me with 225. It wasn't at the end of the workout. By the time I got to the 10th set, it was really, really difficult. So pick a weight that's easier than you think. So this, I actually used to start when I would like kind of fall off the wagon for a couple of weeks or whatever, then get back in the gym. I would always start with legs and I would do 135 actually. I do 135, 10, 10 sets of 10. And that was always like a, a great way to get me back into training. And it mm -hmm. always blasted my legs. You'd think 135 is nothing as far as moving the weight. But that's a lot of volume in squats, and so just uh, be careful if you do. If you do say, if you go to if you go yeah. to GVT training and you've never done it before, I would recommend yeah. starting a way lot, lighter than you. Yeah, think. way lighter yeah. than you think. Now, for now, what time. are the what are the, the the potential cons of this kind of training? Like, what are the things you need to watch out for? Uh, I would say joint pain or injury because you are stressing the same area over and over and over yeah. and over again. So if your repetitive pattern, if your hip mobility isn't perfect and a squat challenges it a little bit, uh, and you do 10 sets of squats, uh, you might find yourself having some issues. If bench presses are okay for you, but sometimes they bother your shoulder, 10 sets of bench press is probably not a good idea uh, for your shoulder. So keep that in mind, whatever exercise you pick, make sure it's something you could do well because doing 10 sets of it, if you're just a little bit off, by the end of the workout, uh, you'll probably run into some problems. Next question is from Connie Chiwa. What's your take on the catchphrase, sweating for the wedding, as seen on social media? What is an alternative strategy or mindset for people who are preparing for a big event? I didn't know this was a thing. I know. Uh, this is a thing? This is yeah. People getting creative again, making hashtags. I I'll tell you. Like, so no days off. Here's some, of here's some behind the scenes, like, uh, you know, what, what your trainer doesn't tell you stuff as a trainer. At, when I was a trainer, if I had a, a, a goal assessment, somebody shows up and I'm going to show them some exercises. And my, my goal is to try to get the person to hire me, right? Because I'm trying to build my business and I, I want them to hire me. If they said anywhere in my goal assessment, uh, when I said to them, why, why are you working out? And they said, oh, I'm getting married in five months. Guaranteed client. It yeah. was like the most, it was easy. Yeah. yeah. Because. They're super motivated. Yeah. It's like, it's the big day. They've probably been thinking about it forever since they were kids. They want to look a particular way. And I knew that they were going to hire me on the spot. It's an extremely events uh, or, or dates, things that are important to you are very powerful short-term motivators. Terrible long-term motivators. Absolutely terrible. 
once the date is up, all the drive and motivation and all the the, the, the mental aspect of every the, re, the reason why you're working out in the first place and eating a particular way in the first place is gone. Yeah, throw it out the window. It's literally gone in a day, and your consistency afterwards completely disappears. Um, and so I knew this. I knew if a client hired me for their wedding, I was already thinking ahead of time. First off, I knew they were going to hire me. Second off, how am I going to keep this person consistent after the wedding? Um, was the second thing. So I would say this, there's nothing wrong with training for a specific date, but in your mind, have a plan for afterwards and understand that your motivation is going to be low afterwards. It's just going to be, what is that going to look like and how are you going to maintain your consistency? I think what really matters too is uh, if we start sweating, you know, sweating for the wedding, uh, how far out from the wedding really makes a big difference, right? So if I had somebody who came to me and they had a wedding in six months, um, that's a lot of time for me to spend the first couple of months trying to rebuild their metabolism, right? Get them eating really well and create some good behaviors and lay a solid foundation of lifting. And then I have plenty of time to really ramp up the intensity and the movement and the sweating and the cardio leading up to that event to kind of get them to peak at their best. Uh, but somebody who says I'm sweating for the wedding and the wedding is in 30 or 60 days, that's really tough. It's really one, it's really tough to even see that much change in that short period of time. And I really know that it, the whatever I give them for that, you know, four to eight week window is going to set them up for failure afterwards. Yeah. And so it, to me, uh, depending on how much time I have to prepare this person for that wedding really uh, dictates what that programming looks like heading into the wedding. Because yeah, if you come to me and you say, I've only got four weeks and I've got a wedding, I need to shred as many pounds as possible. Then yeah, calorie restriction and moving like crazy uh, is the best route mm. to to shred as much as you can in four weeks. The reality of that is though, is you're only going to rebound that much harder when you oh, get yeah. out of it. It's usually that. It's usually a really small window they give you uh, and they just want to crash basically do all of it at once all the kitchen sink in there with cardio with diet like extreme dieting and then lifting weights basically lifting weights with cardio uh and they want to do all of that uh, the entire time to to basically burn themselves out completely and then they just don't realize what they're going to have to pay for after the event and all that and then there's the 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 wraps and then the the sweet sweat and then all this <laughs> bullshit that they're going to add on top of that at the end which i'm sure they're they're waiting for us to talk about that kind of stuff you yeah, know no. the other thing too is i had this conversation this uh, this weekend i was with my aunt right and she's talking about she's wanting to drop weight she's in some of the worst shape she's been in in a long time and i've written diets for her before and got her and stuff and she's like you know i really want you to help me I, I need to get at least 15 of these pounds off as, as fast as possible and i was going over diet with her and i was explaining like what we what i want you to do though this first month is i don't want to lose any weight on the scale and she's like no 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 no. i, I want to lose 15 pounds i said you don't understand you don't pounds is not what you care about on the scale you want to change your body as fast as possible correct she's like yes yes i want to change i want to lose body fat i want to drop down i said so then it's not about the scale weight and the fastest way believe it or not to change your body composition isn't you dramatically dropping on the scale it's a nice exchange. As you are slowly burning body fat, you're also building muscle. And so there's very little movement on the scale. And I think people get so caught up in seeing the scale go down in these, these short bouts where you have 60, 90 days to get ready for a wedding. And just because you're 60 or 90 days out for a wedding still doesn't mean that you want to see the scale move that much. It's still the fastest way to change your body composition would be a nice, beautiful exchange of losing body fat while also building muscle. That will make your body look the most different. Different, but we get in this like hurry of oh I got it I want to be down 15 pounds or I'm 15 pounds heavier than I've ever been and we get so caught up in the scale as our gauge of are we doing a good job and in reality if you're just really getting after it or starting your program seeing the scale drop down in those first 30 to 60 days is not a good strategy and even if you think that moving the scale that fast is helping you look better, faster, you're not necessarily true if you're not building muscle at the same rate. Yeah, I, again, I, I really stress this, like plan for post-wedding. What am I going to do after? And also realize you're going to be not nearly as motivated and be honest with yourself. So you're working out five days a week leading up to your wedding. Set a goal for three days a week uh, after you get married. Okay, when I'm done, I get back from my honeymoon, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week. If you lost 20 pounds Going into your wedding, you're going to gain back eight pounds or 10 pounds. So plan for that. Be okay with it and come up with a, a long-term plan because otherwise you're going to have uh, a tough, tough road ahead of you. Next question is from Andy Rodding. 
Is it normal to want to sleep 30 to 60 minutes after a workout? Nope. No, that's not normal. <laughs> that sounds, sounds fun, though. Yeah, I know, right? Um, you know, here's the thing. like, mm. And this is one of the most uh, um, important things I think I ever communicated to clients, and it really was effective uh, for them, at least. I would tell them that after their workout, they should feel good. So Energized. You should, you should, mm. Yeah, you should leave. What I would say is you should walk out of my studio and feel more energized than you walk in. You should walk out feeling more motivated, more productive, and sharper than you did when you walked in. If you walk out and feel wasted and dead and like you need to go sit on the couch for a couple hours, uh, then we went too hard. Now, there's, there's nothing wrong with those rare workouts where you're going to the gym and that's the goal is to see what you're made of and test your capabilities. But the vast majority of workouts, you should after you're done, you should feel amazing You that, and, and judge it off that because yeah. if you don't, you went too hard. And now here's the thing. This is when people have a tough time. They think... Well, this can't be too hard. I only did this much or I only did that much. Why am I? It's it's all relative. If you feel like shit or feel like going to sleep after your workout, whatever you did, even if it was 15 minutes on the stationary bike, that was too much. You got to go easy. You should not feel this way after you're done with the workout. Yeah, I've been thinking about this too because I've had like moments where that'll happen to me, like where I'll have a workout that didn't seem like it was that intense and I'll just want to go to sleep. And really, I, I take it back to being overstimulated and having like too much of that, you know, early in, in the morning and then like overdoing it to where uh, now I'm I'm adding this added bit of, of stress to the body and, and like I just feel like fatigued from it, like, like, more so than I should be. So it's just this, this, uh, you got to do sort of an inventory of stress and, and figure out like where you're at in terms of uh, outside, uh, you know, external factors, like uh, whether it's like stress from work, whether it's stress from family, uh, you know, all these other stimulants and things you're adding in, in, you know, your routine, like a lack of sleep, uh, lots of different factors that, you know, and then you're working out. And then after that, you know, you may have a propensity to want to just go to sleep. It's interesting that you, you share your your story because I, what I was going to say and allude to was that in my experience with clients, um, what's actually really common is is overstimulating. So is using so much caffeine and pre workout, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the crash, right? And they crash hard afterwards. So it's like you're you're taking a cup or two of coffee to start your day, then you also slam a pre workout, which is another 350 milligrams. Then you go get after it in your workout, and then you just it's the crash, it's the come down after afterwards. I thought I read a long time ago, and I think you corrected me, Sal, on this or not. I I think I, I thought that caffeine was um, like every Everyone's, we always refer to it as like an upper, but what happens chemically in the body is what gives us that spike in energy is our body trying to fight against it. Are you familiar? It increases the circulating, uh, I can't remember the chemical in the brain, but it, it actually increases the amount of it that circulates. And that's why you get an energy spike from it. Right. So the way it works is not necessarily like it, it directly is a stimulant, but yeah. rather it causes... Uh, your body's production of these uh, chemicals to yeah, yeah to, to be more effective. But but yeah, that's a good point. Um, if I overstimulate, I definitely will crash for sure, and I'll notice it a couple hours or you know two or three hours later. I mean, if you take a stimulant before your workout, he, here's how you know you took too much. You feel out of breath uh, more than you normally would. That's what happens to me. So mm. I'm doing a, a high rep set of squats, and I find myself having to stop and rest longer if yeah. you feel like your heart rate is a little too yeah, fast. Your heart rate's racing too much. Yeah, a little dizzy if you feel like you're like shaky or you know too aggressive. That might be too much. Um, and then you, you might get a crash after. Next question is from Mr. James J. Cho. Is it common for one side's leg muscles and hip flexor to be tighter than the other? Yeah, very, it's, it's very common. It's more common than have them both be the same. You know that's for sure. It's right. pretty. It's 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 actually rare to have both sides be identical, right? In flexibility, it, it just you know you sit a particular way, yeah. you might move a particular way. I know for me, crossing my legs, I can tell one side is always a little tighter uh, than the other. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and now this is a good thing to know because now you can work on balancing uh, them out. You can work on improving the mobility of the side that's tight. And you can do exercises that encourage uh, balance. So if this is you and it's a big deal, 
then I would do split stance or yes. unilateral exercise. Unilateral, yeah. I was just going to say that's probably the move with this is to really refocus and kind of bring that more in the programming of what you're doing to really address a lot of this instability or something that's looming there that's causing, uh, you know, this tightness where the body feels like it needs to, uh, you know, brace and protect around, uh, you know, these joints. I think this is so common that I would make the case that I think everybody is this way right mm -hmm. i mean don't i mean don't yeah, we're all dominant in one side right like nobody is there's nobody that is perfectly symmetrical there's nobody there's nobody that their whole left side is exactly the same strength size everything mm -hmm. length limb ev all those things are nobody is perfectly symmetrical so when you do something that's bilateral like a squat where both feet are on the ground and you drop down into that it's very natural that the dominant, the stronger side is going to take over a little bit of the movement, even if it's subconsciously and you can't see it. It's just, you know, a little bit of the energy and strength is going to come from that side. And the more of it that you have, the more obvious it'll be by how tight you are on that. And the key for all of us, I think, is becoming aware of that and then knowing when you go into your workout. So not only are you addressing it with things like, you know, south myofascial release and doing mobility work, and but you're also thinking about it when you're doing these exercises now, like, oh, wow, if I'm always in my, so in my case, it's my left side, right? So uh, I have a tendency to want to shift my weight over to the left side in a squat. Now it's so subtle that the average eye wouldn't be able to see it, but I know of it because of how I'm always tighter and worse on that side. So when I drop down in that squat, I'm really thinking about that, making sure that I'm trying to give at, at equal effort on the opposite side. In addition to, of course, the, the other work. Awesome. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. We're on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. Sometimes it's really hard to see the silver lining or to reframe everything and like, this is positive. It's positive when you feel like shit and mm -hmm. it's hard as fuck. Sometimes I look at it as like, I accept that it's really hard. I accept that I want to quit. That's why so many people don't make this. And instead of looking at it and trying to say all the time, like, change.